Hello, my miraculous friend, and welcome to another episode of the Magnify Your Miracles podcast. This is Reverend Francis Faden, and I'm so excited to be sharing a really powerful book that's had a big impact in my life, and I know it's going to be helpful for you. But before we do that, let's go ahead and start the way I like to start everything I do by taking a few deep breaths together and just helping us to get grounded and centered. <clears throat> if you are driving, please keep your eyes open, but you can still very gently bring your awareness to your breathing. As the breath begins to calm your body temple, Breathing in that energy of expansion and breathing out whatever you no longer need, allowing your mind and your body to be in harmony, so to prepare you to really receive this energy and this information today. And knowing that whatever you need to hear is exactly what you'll be hearing, let's take one more deep breath together in gratitude, and we can begin. All right, yay, books. I love books so, so much, as you know. And this book is called Healing Mantras by Thomas Ashley Ferrand. Healing Mantras, using sound affirmations for personal power, creativity, and healing. And I'm sharing this book with you for a couple of reasons. One is because all the work that I do, whether I think I'm doing it or not, is always based on healing. Two is because I've had some powerful experiences with using mantras in my own life. And three is because we're coming up on two really auspicious holidays, spiritual holidays, that this book is perfect for. So one of those holidays is coming up on uh, this coming Friday, February 21st, um, I'm recording this in the year 2020, and it is a holiday called Mahashivaratri. Now, this holiday changes from year to year, depending upon the lunar calendar. It is a holiday from Hinduism, where we connect in and we honor the power of God in the form of Shiva. Shiva is one of my favorite manifestations of the divine masculine energy. He's known as the destroyer. But Shiva the destroyer is really destroying our ignorance. So it's not something to be afraid of. It's actually something we want to welcome. We want to welcome in that energy of letting, you know, releasing to Shiva anything that we no longer need. The other uh, beautiful, it's not really a holiday in the way that we think about holiday, is the energy of Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday begins on Wednesday the 26th this year. So that will be a week from uh, when this podcast is released. And that starts the 40-day practice of Lent. And it just so happens that Thomas Ashley Ferrand really recommends doing a 40-day discipline for any mantra practice that you're doing. Now, you don't have to do it for 40 days, but if you do do it, what an auspicious time. So we have Shiva's energy supporting us. We have the Ash Wednesday energy supporting us with Lent. Interesting to me is that uh, often when we see Shiva, he's kind of covered in an ash which I think is very interesting. And ashes are used in Hinduism also, um, holy ash to really uh, give blessings to people. And it, it, they come from these sacred fire ceremonies that they do. So we have this, of course, it doesn't mean that in Catholicism with the Ash Wednesday, but it's, I love when we start to see how these different traditions start to uh, overlay and how they interact with each other. And it's my personal belief that the Christ energy is very similar to the Shiva energy. And we can see very similar vibrations with them in terms of being the energies, the representations of God that is here for everybody. Shiva is here for everybody, even the, even the ones that nobody wants to be around, like the snakes that are around his neck and all of that. Um, normally we wouldn't see that, but with Shiva we do because all things are welcome and all things become transformed, just like with the Christ vibration welcoming all those who were supposedly not welcome. 
So this book, Healing Mantras, first let me tell you what a mantra is. We, we throw this word around in our vernacular in the West, not really knowing exactly what it means. But a mantra is a sacred word of power. It's a sacred word of power. Sometimes we will use the word affirmation, but the difference between an affirmation and a mantra is that mantras are in Sanskrit, and Sanskrit is a language of energy. It's not a language that represents energy, which the words I'm using represent something, and your mind actually has to kind of translate that to get to the essence of what it is that I'm trying to communicate to you. But in Sanskrit, the sound itself is the thing itself. It is the energy itself, which is why when you do mantras in the Sanskrit language, it's really powerful because it's working on your energy field. It's activating your chakras. It's activating parts of your consciousness that your conscious mind isn't even aware of and doesn't know is happening. It's in a very scientific process that's deeper than what I can possibly explain to you. And the closest thing that we have to that, probably I would say Hebrew is probably the closest to the Sanskrit language and that it is a language of uh, vibration and energy and consciousness that the sound in the words actually are the thing. It's probably the closest that we have. And so this book is wonderful because if you don't know anything about mantras, it's going to explain things to you. It's going to talk about, like the very first chapter says, in the beginning was the word, um, and talks about all of that, that God said, first God said, let there be light, and then there was light. So it's the energy of sound being the energy of creation. So it's going to take you all through that. But I wanted to read this part to you, and then you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to take you through a little bit of a mantra practice that you can use for Shivaratri, that you can use during the energy of Lent. It's a very simple mantra, but I'm going to take you through a little practice, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about my experience with mantra. So this is in the chapter of how, do, how mantras work, our spiritual physiology. He says, mantra increases our spiritual wattage. Do you love that idea? Mantras allow the chakras to switch on safely and to operate at a higher wattage. When we practice Sanskrit mantra, we increase the ability of the chakras to hold a spiritual charge. It's as if a 25 watt bulb becomes able to hold 50 watts, then 100 watts, then 500 watts, then 1,000 watts. Mantra's power derives not from any particular meaning that their syllables convey, but from the vibrational effect they create when they are pronounced repeatedly. With this overall understanding of our spiritual physiology, of our subtle body and the chakras, and of the way in which our deepest spiritual energies can awaken, we can now discuss what happens to us when we pronounce mantras. The process of intoning these ancient formulas works in the everyday world, even if we don't understand what we are saying, because mantras are fundamentally about energy rather than meaning. And that's what I had just said to you. They're really about the energy, not what the things mean. So again, you don't need to understand it, but I'll read a little bit more here because this is so helpful. There are 50 letters in the basic Sanskrit alphabet. These letters correspond to the 50 petals of the six chakras from the base to the eyebrow. Like the chakras themselves, advanced spiritual adepts can actually see the letters on the petals of the chakras. When a Sanskrit mantra is uttered, the petals corresponding to the letters contained in the mantra vibrate in a spiritual resonance. This sets off a cascade of energetic effects. First, the petal itself, the outer energy of the chakra, is stimulated by the vibration and becomes tuned to a higher energy state. Then, as a stone causes a ripple to travel across a pond, the petals of the chakra vibrate the energy of the corresponding plexus in the physical body. These vibrations have stimulating, strengthening, and regulating energetic effects that are healing to our physical systems. Just as lifting weights increases the ability of our muscles and even our skeletal structure to handle tasks requiring more strength, chanting Sanskrit mantras provides a workout for our chakras. We experience a net gain in our spiritual energy and a corresponding increase in our capacity to process powerful kundalini energy. Kundalini energy is the energy at the very base of your spine. Moreover, when we focus the sound vibration of mantra with a consciously held intention, we can even direct its energy to specific parts of the body. 
Through the vibration of mantra, ambient spiritual energy is attracted to and gathered into the chakras of the chanter, increasing that person's total spiritual energy. In addition to energizing the chakras and bringing in energy from the near surround, as they say in physics, mantra also balances the feminine and masculine energy that crisscrosses the body, allowing kundalini to flow throughout the body. As the kundalini fills each chakra, the sun, the quote-unquote sunflowers begin to straighten on their stalks, their flowers no longer closed and dropping, but fully opened and spinning with new levels of energy that provide even more vitality to the physical body. Isn't that amazing? It's so exciting. That's why I love mantra energy. It's so powerful. Because you know, I love working with the chakras. That's a big piece of the work that I do. Anything that I find along the way that helps energy, consciousness, chakras, this is a path of miracles. If you want to magnify your miracles, start working with mantras. No joke. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, my story with mantra, and then we're going to work on a particular one together. And this is something that you can do. I'm going to put this, enter this information in the show notes for you of who my mantra teacher is. So my mantra teacher, his name, his spiritual name is Bharata. His given name is Bill Barry, and he's up in Massachusetts, and you can find him on his website, mantravijaya.com. That's A-M-N-T-R-A-V-I-J-A-Y-A, mantravijaya.com. And he is actually a direct student of the gentleman who wrote this book, Thomas Ashley Ferrand. He learned from him directly, and uh, Bharata, who is my teacher, is actually a priest in the order that Thomas Ashley Ferrand had started. And I'm currently studying to do that. I'm studying about mantras. I'm studying about pujas because I love all these things. So you can call Bharata and you can have a consult with him and you can actually ask him to choose a mantra for you based on whatever you're going through. And he actually will give you what I call a mantra prescription. He might give you three or four different mantras depending upon what you're dealing with. So if you're having problems with your finances, there's mantras for that. Your health, there's mantras for that. You want to change your job and get a better job, there's a mantra for that. You want to attract the love of your life, there's a mantra for that. You want to uh, conceive a child, there's, a, there's mantras for everything, literally. My favorite mantras are mantras that help you to grow spiritually, which they all do kind of by default. And then mantras that really help you connect with a particular aspect of God. And one of the things I love about Hinduism is even though they have all these different aspects of God, they all represent the one God. It's just like we see in nature. Everything in nature is a manifestation of the divine, but all of it is the divine, right? So the tree, so if you're connected with the trees, you can connect with the divine through the trees, or you can connect with the divine through the water or through the flowers or all that. Any of them are all manifestations, but it's manifestation of the one divine energy. So it's actually not a polytheistic religion, although people think that it is. It's all the manifestations of the divine, and then we have the one energy behind all of it. So I started working with him a few years ago. I called Bharata, and I, I don't remember what I was working at at the time, but I said, I'm looking for some help. You know, like, What's the right mantra for me? I'm kind of drawn to these mantras. What do you think? And he gave me, I think he gave me three different ones at the time to work with. And he said, try these. One of these was the Gayatri Mantra, which you may know. Uh, one was a Durga Mantra called the Chamundi Mantra, which is very powerful. And then one was another one to use in, uh, in meditation. And I said, all right, I'm going to try this. And so normally when you chant mantras, you're doing it 108 times. That would be one mala. So uh, prayer beads. The word for the prayer bead is mala. We have the word rosary in the West. And usually it has 108 beads on it. And that's a normal repetition. But you can also do any division of that, which could be 27, 54, 96, like whatever it might be. Any every variation of about 12. Usually you do it in a subset of 12. So I like to do it subsets of 20, 27 or 54. 108. Why do we do it 108 times, Bill? Well, there are 108 subtle channels in the body called nadis, N-A-D-I. These nadis are these uh, places, these energy points, 
And when you do 108 repetitions, it actually clears out those energy channels. It opens up and clears out those nadis. And so 108 times, it's like taking a sound bath for yourself when you repeat it 108 times. Now, some are really short and it's very easy to do 108 times. Some of them are longer and to do them 108 times would take you a lot of time, which is why you can do it 27 or 54 or whatever it might be that you feel comfortable doing. So if you call up Bharata and you talk to him, he will, he's very highly intuitive and he will listen to what you're saying and he will give you, I call it my mantra medicine. It's my, a prescription of what might be the right thing for you. And then he'll recommend whether you should do it for 10 days or 40 days. And he'll explain to you how to do it, why to do it. Now, if you go on his website, mantravijaya.com, he actually has a, a few downloads that you can do for that are free forms of mantra practice, the role of devotion and Sanskrit and the chakras. I highly recommend that you get these if you can, um, especially the one Sanskrit and the chakras, because he really explains how it works. And then on top of giving you a mantra, you can also do what he calls a personalized tutorial, which if you really want to go in depth and know, uh, really understand about them, this will really help you. So I called him and I started working with the Gayatri mantra. The Gayatri mantra is the mantra of light. It's the mantra that illuminates our mind. And it is a very powerful kind of all around healing mantra. So it has a healing power. It has a protective power. Um, it has the ability to clear out your mind. Uh, the way that I do it is a long form. So I'm actually not going to practice that one with you today because it's a little bit long. And if you're new at mantra practice, it can feel a little bit overwhelming. I might do it in the future though. If, and if you want me to teach you this mantra in the future, just email me, francis at francisfaden.com and tell me, hey, I want you to do this on your podcast. I really want to learn how to do the Gayatri Mantra. And then I'd be happy to do that uh, with you and for you. But today we're going to do a, a shorter one. So I started working with that mantra and I just, all I could do, because it's longer, I did it 54 times a day and I did it every day. And for me, that was a big deal because I never, I not, was not very good at being consistent with anything, Gemini that I am, but I did it every day. And I did it every day for about a year. And after about two and a half months of doing it every day, now this is the Gayatri Mantra, which is all about uh, meditating on the light, the light that brings us illumination and understanding. And all I did was do that 54 times once a day. Within about two and a half to three months, an amazing miracle happened for me, which is that I started picking up books that I hadn't read in a long time, books that were difficult for me to read, and I started to understand them. This mantra expanded my capacity to understand. It enlightened my mind. I started reading things that I was like, I wish I understood what this meant or I wish I could apply it. And all of a sudden, it was so plain and so easy because the mantra had really started to purify my mind. That's how powerful mantras can be. So I am going to take you through um, a mantra. We're going to do the mantra to Shiva. Now remember, Shiva is, they call him the great destroyer. I like to call him the great purifier. He protects you. It's the energy of protection. It's the energy of enlightenment. It's the energy of auspiciousness. This is a, a mantra you've probably heard before. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya, and it means, here's the translation, Om and salutations, may the elements of this creation abide in me in full manifestation. So you're really invoking the Shiva nature within you, the part of you that is awakened, the part of you that is auspicious and filled with that energy of understanding and enlightenment. And this is a really powerful practice. So for people who do the Mahashivaratri, it's spending the whole night doing practices, mantras, devotions, pujas, ritual worship um, to the Lord Shiva. And they say that if you can actually spend the whole night and not, not fall asleep and actually complete those practices that you'll be liberated in this lifetime, you'll be free of the cycle of death and rebirth which is pretty amazing. 
course, the trick is you have to be able to stay up the whole night, which takes a little bit of energy and willpower. So we are going to do this Om Namah Shivaya mantra, and we're going to do it 27 times. And as you're doing this mantra, again, you can just listen to it. I've had experiences with mantras where I would just fall asleep listening to one. I had that happen with a healing mantra that, again, was a very long mantra. And again, I can teach that to you if you want. It's very long, but it's very powerful. And I was too long for me to learn to memorize it and say it. So I just listened to a recording of it when I would be falling asleep. And within about a week, I discovered my Ayurvedic doctor who was like a half an hour from me. She's the only one in the country who was trained by this uh, Ayurvedic master from India and really helped me in my healing process. That's how powerful these mantras are. Even just listening to them can really bring you great spiritual benefit. So I'm gonna ask you to take a breath with me. Mentally, let's welcome in the energy of Lord Shiva the great and auspicious Shiva, the one who frees us, the great liberator, who frees us from our karma, who frees us from anything that is binding and holding us, who frees our mind from any false beliefs and limitations and awakens us to the truth. So Om Namah Shivaya. Here we go. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya 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 Om Namah Shivaya. And just allow yourself now to notice how do you feel? Just even hearing the sound and the vibration of the name of Shiva. Om Namah Shivaya. I know for me, I can feel my heart chakra feels more open more energized, a little bit tingly. My head feels a little bit clearer and I feel calm. That's the number one thing is I feel calm. How do you feel? So this is a beautiful practice that you can do. You can do it on Shivaratri day, Mahashivaratri. You can do it throughout Lent. You can do it whenever you feel like you need a lift. If you want to uh, purchase this book, I will put the link in the show notes. Of course, you can get it on Amazon, but I also encourage you to take a look at the website, sanskritmantra.com. Let me see if I can pull this up for you. Sanskritmantra.com. Um, and this is the website for Thomas Ashley Front. He has, he's no longer with us. He's no longer in his body, but his, his wife, uh, Satyabama is her name. And she is continuing on this beautiful organization and this beautiful tradition. And one of the things I love about it is it's really go at your own pace. It's really your own process. And they have beautiful resources here for mantra practice. They have CDs. They have um, malas that you can purchase. 
They have books that you can, you can purchase as well. So I will put both of these websites in the show notes and you can definitely check it out for yourself. But my friends, I really want to encourage you that this is a way, sometimes if you feel powerless, if you feel hopeless, if you feel like you're at your wit's end and like, what can I do to change my circumstances? Mantra practice is a really powerful way to start changing your circumstances. It's not wishful thinking. It's not affirmations. It is uh, a science that comes from a higher age that we don't understand. So I say practice, try a mantra that works for you and see which ones speak to you, see which ones jump out and then do it 10 days, 40 days, three months, whatever works for you and do the practice that works for you. It starts to expand your awareness. Like I said, it will really change and awaken your understanding in your mind. And awareness is the key to miracles. Remember what I always say, the key to magnifying your miracles is to remember and to become aware of the truth, which is that your miracle is already here. And that's what mantras will do for you. All right, my miraculous friend, thank you so much. God bless you. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.